My guest tonight is a Tony and Emmy award-winning actor and comedian. He's done it all like Bogey and Bacall. Everyone loves this guy. Please welcome one of my best friends. Uh, he's a genius, Mr. Martin Short. Sir, how are you? Conan, I am fine. I am fabulous. You look and amazing. And I say you, look, I've never seen more lighting on one human being. What are you talking about? I have one little, little circular, look at that little, hold it. There it is. That's all I've got is that little ring light. That's all I have. No, you look really good. You do look, look fantastic because you're what, 82 or something. <laughs> <right? laughs> you know. Because you've been I, doing this a long time. I served our country valiantly in the Korean War, and I think I deserve credit for that. <laughs> uh, you look very nice. You have a very soft lighting. You yes. look like uh, Barbara Stanwyck on the Big Valley whenever they would show up. <laughs> By the way, I always love when you play to the kids. The kids need and to know about Barbara Stanwyck in the Big Valley. <laughs> Really? Uh, here's a question I have. Uh, people ask me this all the time, and then I think, me? What about, what about Martin Short? People ask me, Conan, do you miss an audience? And I think, yeah, I miss an audience. Marty Short must really miss an audience, because you, you are a vaudevillian at heart. You need the laughter. Look, long ago, I always worried about what if something happened? And so I have an applause record. Huh? And... Uh, <laughs> When I wake up, I say, how about this morning? And I hit the button. And I, I don't know, I feel good. It's better than vitamins. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're getting I, it. Yeah. Yeah. Do you really, though? Do you really miss? Because I don't, you know, I strangely don't. I, I don't think I do. I'm obsessed with making sure that I do everything right for my children and myself. And, you know, I'm a new grandfather. My son Oliver and, and daughter right. had a baby in January. Yeah. So, you know, and making sure that everyone's healthy and smart and doing things correctly. And that kind of accomplishment is more enticing to me than your vaudeville need of, uh, wait a second, and all that stuff you do with your kids. Yeah, I, um, I'm the opposite. Yes, I try to practice social distancing and everything but I need the roar of the crowd. I never got laughs. I, got I was gonna say, but you never got it, so why would you need it? <laughs> <laughs> when you I, need something, wouldn't you need something that you normally got like this? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I do very few sound effects. Yeah, but you are very good. Your cricket is one of the best. Have you ever heard my crow? Let's hear your crow. Not bad. You know, I have one more. A monkey. Monkey. <laughs> <laughs> I just picture someone walking by a house right now in this quarantine neighborhood, and yeah. you're alone in that house, and say a UPS guy walking by and hearing that, and thinking, well, he's gone. We've lost him. No, they just say, I'm not going to that house with wild monkeys. <laughs> Authentic wild monkeys and cricket. Yeah, exactly. Are you, uh, how do you handle, since we brought it up, a package coming to the door in, the, in these times? Some people are very, they don't want to take any deliveries. A guy came up to me. He's about, you know, a younger guy and he had a mask on. And he, you know, the, the glass. And I said, just leave it on the porch. And he looks at me and goes, Oh my God, you're that guy. You're that guy, you're Martin Short. Oh yeah, hey, I mean, you got old, but it's still you, right? So he said that? Yep. Yeah. And then I said, I said, well, um, take off your mask for a second. I, I said, how old are you? He said, I'm 34. I said, I would have thought 40. And he went, oh, you got me, dude. <laughs> what an idiot. <laughs> He's since been murdered. Don't worry. I don't that. care. I've been ravaged by time and it happens. Look, it hasn't happened to me uh, and nor will it. But yes, you have been ravaged. Ravaged. You have the hair care products that take care of all that. This is a bunch of, this is now I'm using clay. I'm using modeling clay. 
uh, on my head, <laughs> doing whatever I can to keep this thing going. Let's talk about uh, your dear friend and fellow uh, comedic icon, Steve Martin, or as yes. he likes to be known, Mr. Steve Martin. You and he do this very funny show together, hilarious show that you've been taking around the world. When, this whole, when this whole pandemic hit, you guys were in, were you in Ireland? When we were, uh, it was unbelievable. We had, we had left, you know, it was very interesting because we kept thinking, should we cancel this? Can we cancel? This is like the week before. I think we flew over on March 6th and we performed the next night in Glasgow, Scotland. And the next night we were in Dublin. And after our show, I was back at the hotel, it was around three in the morning, um, Dublin time. And I'm seeing the president say, uh, everyone must, you know, get out in 24 hours. You know, of course, Trump forgot to mention not, but you have more time if you're Americans or if you're in Ireland or the UK. He just left that. You know, busy. And um, so we frantically got out and, and that was it. So I got back to LA on the 13th of March. But it was harrowing. We were, and also we were, it was confusing. You know, we questioned whether we should be doing shows, but the, the government was saying it was fine and doctors were saying it was fine. It was a very strange messaging at that time. Part of your act that you do with Steve is you two really, you really go at each other. You're good friends in real life, but you tell these savage jokes about <laughs> I've seen you guys do it several times and I weep, it's so funny, but it's brutal. And I was thinking they must love that in the UK. The Irish love it and the UK Irish. love it. In America, sometimes people say, oh, that. That was a little mean. That was mean, that was hurtful. That was it hurtful, hurt. but in, in, I would think in Ireland, they must have just gone crazy for it. Oh, they loved it. Um, Steve says of me, you know what I love about performing with Marty? No paparazzi. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll say to Steve, you look fantastic. And I guess the secret is that you've looked 70 since you were 30. <laughs> and yet people will come up to him and say, oh, Big fan, Angela Lansbury. Yeah. <laughs> so, and what happens? The Irish probably sit there and just, they love it. They just nod and go like, that's right. You know what I mean? Oh, I'm taking the piss out of me. Oh, uh, I like to take the piss out of me. Yeah. No, no, no. And I have, you know, my father's born and raised in Cross Glen County, Armagh, just over the border in the north. My father was very sarcastic. And I think there was even times when I would do Jiminy Glick and I'd think, Ooh, I'm channeling my father a little bit. Really? You know, Marty. So yeah, you know. absolutely. Um, I have a tape of you know, my, me interviewing my father. And Marty, of course, is taking singing lessons and, of course, has no chance of hell of ever developing into any sort of singing talent. But that's not the point. The point that he's interested. And, you know, you hear me laughing in the background. It was all, that's the way it was done. <laughs> <laughs> so I remember one time my um, cousin's, Patrick and Oliver uh, and I sat up, you know, my, my father was born and raised in a bar, Shorts Bar, that's still there, run by my aunt Rosaline. And we sat up until about five in the morning. You know, you start off uh, drinking beer and then you switch to whiskey. And we were talking about families and people would cry. And, you know, it was one of those nights. And then around 8.30 in the morning, I came down the first one, very bleary eyed and Uncle Patty, was my brother and father's brother was cleaning out the glasses and he just looked at me and said, and how did the character assassination go last night, Mark? <laughs> and it's in the genes. We still do it. I mean, yeah. I've been in this country for 120 years and all we want to do is sit around and uh, talk treason about each other. And how much do I love insulting you? You look like Mr. Rogers, if Mr. Rogers drank before each show. <laughs> and I mean that with love. <laughs> well, Remember I once said to you that whatever cosmetic surgery you'd had, mm -hmm. and you'd clearly had a lot, 20% more and I think you're done. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wishing, yes. I'm wishing I had had all the work that we all know I need to get done. <laughs> I wish I had had it done just before this quarantine. Because we get to wear the face mask. I was thinking the same thing. About yourself or about me? About you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Be 
honest with me, Marty, if I went and I got crazy stuff done, I mean, uh -huh. crazy, I feel like you would, in front of everybody, would you call me out on it or would you let it go? No, you see, in that case, I wouldn't say a thing. I'd say, boy, someone got a good night's sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I talk about in my show about how cosmetic surgery does not work in a man because you get this look. <laughs> Yes. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> what a wonderful story. <laughs> <laughs> and no one says, who's that 37-year-old dude? Right. They say, who's the 70-year-old who's been in a fire? <laughs> <laughs> and the problem I just, I've lost weight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's also, the problem is it's the same face when you get bad news. Oh, did you hear so-and-so's mother died? It's the same face that you're stuck with. I'm gonna get tons of work done during this quarantine, tons. They're gonna hack <laughs> off huge sections of me. So you're gonna go to that section of your house, which is a full hospital. Yes, I, yeah. have, a, I have a whole wing of the house that's just, just, and there are surgeons standing by and they're gonna go to town to bring the oh, you go to Conan's house and, and, and he'll say, would you like a beer? Would you like an IV drip? I mean, it's just natural <laughs> for you to have medical information going on because of your cosmetic needs. Yeah. I, I'm sure you'd probably love it if I came over to your house uh, and we hung out together. Mm. Hey, that's an interesting thing. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it that that idea repulses me so much? Let's talk. Now, do you think it is correct for you and I to go for a walk wearing face masks and being six feet apart? Uh, or is yes. it just, see, I think, I think it's probably fine. Again, don't listen to me, I'm a clown. But psychologically, it's tricky. To be honest, you always insisted on social distancing with me long before. But that was only because of the breath. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't think I'm speaking out of school here, because anyone who's met you, Conan has the breath of a cougar. You could turn leopard skin back to rabbit. <laughs> you're not a, you're honest. I'll give you that. You're an honest man. You're I think I'm delightful in a kind of pushy, small dose way. Yeah, yeah. Um, I love your background, by the way. It looks lovely. I've interviewed tons of people on Zoom. This looks gorgeous. Really does look uh, like you're at Versailles. It's very nice. Well, you know, I, I have made money and I was left money. <laughs> so it's, I mean, who am I kidding? Um, well, listen, I'm up for a social distancing appropriate walk whenever you want to do it. Oh, I'll do that with you at any time. Here's the only thing. Mm -hmm. No, no, that's good because the mask will deal with the breath. It's <laughs> the, it's the um, jokes. Remember, I've heard them. So maybe less of the jokes from me. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Gets a little needy, huh? A little? Okay. I'm going to make now, sure. I love you, Conan, and I, I can't wait. I think we should do that uh, maybe Sunday. I'm alerting the paparazzi. I'm here, yeah. They hound me. Oh, how they hound me. I bet they do. The Willoughby's is available now on Netflix. I want to get the word yes. out. Yes, Willoughby's. Is this too close? Uh, yeah, back, baby. No, the Willoughby's is it's a fabulously funny and delightful film with Ricky Gervais, Terry Crews, fabulous Terry Crews, uh, Maya Rudolph. <laughs> Love you, <bro. laughs> Dan Grakowski. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, there you go. Jesus. And I'm leaving someone out that's fantastic. Oh, Will Forte. Oh. But many people. Yeah. It's a great, great group. It's very funny. And Will Ricky Gervais, I believe, uh, was definitely the executive producer. Yeah, Willoughby's is, uh, is on Netflix. I was with Ricky Gervais in London just, just before this all went down, uh, interviewing him for my podcast. I interviewed him as Jiminy Glick. Please welcome the star of the office, Steve Carell. It's wonderful to see you. Oh, you're not Steve Carell. Oh, that's good. Because I thought, oh my God, Steve Carell's ill. Well, Jiminy Glick, he'd be 
a perfect interviewer for these times because she'd probably never bring up the COVID-19. He wouldn't know about it. He wouldn't even know about it. <laughs> Why doesn't Liza Minnelli appear more in film? That's what he'd ask. So he's sitting there talking to Dr. Fauci and instead of asking him, what do you think is the appropriate length of time that the economy should be shut down? Instead of asking him that, he'd ask, is Brad Pitt a spirit or just a force? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Fauci, enough with the virus. Let's talk Talia Shire. <laughs> Who's talking Talia Shire right now? <laughs> well, that made my day. Thank you. That's one of my favorite. Thank characters. you. Well, listen. Yes, sir. You're a delightful fellow as always. You... you are fantastic. And I love doing your show more than life. It's my favorite show to do on Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> it actually is the nicest thing you've ever said to me. So I know. Well, I, you know, I'm sentimental. Yeah. Marty Short, you're a great man. Conan O'Brien, you're a saint. And I'll see you Sunday. All right, very good. Wow.